What's up YouTube? Capital G here. Got a riveting door for you guys to check out showing you how to use Sacred Beast in conjunction with the gods. Well, kind of a god card, but not like officially a god card, like a pseudo god card. Obviously, the Sacred Beast of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX were, I mean, they were based on the three Egyptian god cards of the Battle City Tournament, and they've always kind of been at odds with each other, I guess. Some people say that Sacred Beasts are kind of a knockoff of the gods, but in this build, you can actually use both of them quite efficiently, and it's because of the numeric support coming out in the next Legendary Duelist, Duelist of Gloom. Anyways, let's go ahead and roll this. So for the most part, you are playing a traditional Sacred Beast deck, but you do have to add a little bit. Like, I'll be straight with you guys. You are going to add a brick to the deck, but I think the brick is actually worth it. Now, I believe with Sacred Beast, if you can drop two of them turn one, and you have Sacred Beast Awakening, you're probably going to beat just about any meta deck in the game. Anytime your opponent tries to summon, you're getting life points, you have negation. He actually has the perfect setup because he has Fallen Paradise, get two draws for free, so it's a pot of greed basically. And then you also get protection for your Sacred Beast monster. So this is like the perfect si uh, setup. And usually, you can get Fallen Paradise kind of like it's, it's a lot easier to get. You don't even need to run things like terraforming anymore because your Chaos Summoning Beast just adds it from your deck to your hand if you don't happen to, you know, hard draw. Now, he actually had it, plus he was able to search it as well, so it, it worked out for him perfectly. And his opponent is playing ABC. He's going to find out the hard way that um, you just can't really do much when your opponent has the Sacred Beast Awakening plus two of them uh, big Sacred Beast monsters. If you happen to have like a board wipe, where you're able to get rid of all their back row, okay, maybe, but generally speaking, when you start trying to activate those important monster effects, like, I don't know, Union Carrier on the field, they're just not going to work. And it gets progressively worse and worse because your opponent is also gaining life points while your monster effects don't work. So usually it's kind of a lock and your opponent can kind of win the game. Turn one, they have these huge 4,000 attack monsters that can just kill you, plus they also have protection. But he actually is going to turn the spike up just a little bit so his opponent does have the nightmare phoenix and continuous effects still work something like nightmare phoenix where it doesn't actually activate the battle protection that won't be negated by sacred beast awakening but if your opponent tries to activate like you know the discard effect to msc a back row that's not going to work so he's going to go into beat down mode and then this is where the God card side of the deck is going to kick in. He is going to activate the Metal Reflect Slime. And this is the card that I say is technically a brick, but it does have a lot of payoff. And that's because you can trade that in and instantly go into your Egyptian Slime God. Now, some of you guys might be like, well, Cap, how's that different from running this in any other deck? You could do that in any other deck. Well, the difference here is that Sacred Beasts already inherently have a lot of level 10 monsters. So let's just say you'll want it to go in to something like a rank 10 XC monster, it wouldn't really be a problem. You could just give up your Egyptian God Slime and another one of your Sacred Beast monsters and still be able to keep some of your other Sacred Beast monsters on the field. So you have the rank 10 angle. Also, if you don't want to summon the Egyptian God Slime, you can actually summon like Slifer. Technically, I wouldn't probably do this play, but you can technically, since this is a continuous trap card, you can use this to summon your Slifer as well because, you know, it is a continuous trap. I probably would didn't go for the second play, but uh, the rank the, the the rank 10 XCs are definitely something that could possibly come up. You might never know when you need to go into time, and you might have to use something like um oh man, who, what's the card I'm thinking of? Uh, Gustav Max, the Rail Cannon. So definitely there is more synergy in here than in an in, in traditional deck. So at this point, he already has two um of the Sacred Beast monsters, but hell, let's just go ahead and make it three. And you know what? Forget about making it three. Let's just go ahead and make it four. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually gonna summon Haman in addition to that. This guy don't care at all. Look at just look how many I've never I don't think I've ever seen this many level 10 monsters on the field. This is just a couple of turns in, and this guy has five level 10 monsters. I mean four sacred beasts and an Egyptian god. Like, what are we doing here, guys? Obviously, ABC has near not a chance of winning this duel. I mean, he could summon Buster Dragon. 
fairly easily at this point but like what's it honestly going to do he's going to try to give himself some tokens at this point he's actually ran out of field to work with sure you can go for you know boral sword dragon that's cute but it's it's not powerful enough to be able to beat our field he will try to cheat around this he thinks he's smart he thinks oh cat all i gotta do is activate my abc dragon buster then chain the effect and take it off the field no sir that will not work it still activates on the field it does not matter where it uh actually is where you know the effect is trying to resolve but you activated it on the field that means its effect is negated and you get no effect obviously he could kill his opponent during the uh next turn well no what i was thinking is that uh boral sword dragon would still live in battle but honestly that wouldn't even matter he doesn't have enough life points at this point uh he has 2000 and these sacred beast monsters do not look happy plus keep in mind he cannot even target the sacred beast monsters on field even if boral sword dragon could somehow put all four of them in defense mode which obviously it can't he wouldn't be able to uh target these guys anyway because of the fallen paradise so yeah sacred beast if you really get them rocking and rolling I think they're a very snowball-y deck. I think they're kind of predicated on what they're able to do in that first turn. It can definitely be a deck that snowballs hard on your opponent. And then, you know, you can possibly play the Egyptian uh, God Slime in here. It's relatively easy to summon. A very easy to summon card. You just flip over Metal Reflect Slime, and then you tribute that, and boom, you got yourself a 3,000 attack monster, 3,000 defender, and it also opens up the potential of those rank 10 plays. Anyways, let's go ahead and look at the deck really quickly. For the most part, it is just... um. It's your traditional Sacred Beast build, but you also have the option of summoning the Egyptian God Slime. Now, all the traps in here are just like continuous traps because you want to leave the door open to summon Uriah. I personally think, I've said this before, I, I, I think this card's trash. It's, it, it's the worst Sacred Beast monster by far. This is why, you know, there was Slifer Red. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst one, but this is like, Uriah is really bad, man. But uh, it's still worth running a bunch of continuous trap cards as your primary traps because you, you never know when summoning the random Uriah might actually work. But for the most part, just stick with Haman and Ravio. Those cards are significantly better. Every build that I've seen of Sacred Beast only runs one copy of Uriah. Like, you not run him more than that. And yeah, the rest of the build is just, it's kind of like a traditional Sacred Beast build. You're running the Metal Reflect Slimes uh, just for the play with the Egyptian uh, God Slime, but if you ever want to summon Uriah just to complete the mix or to complete the package, you can actually use that to summon Uriah as well. Anyways, if you guys are interested in this deck, of course, it will be in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. As always, give the video a thumbs up so YouTube actually shows it to people who are not just you. Uh, subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos.